Hello, what's up YouTube, Ronnie Sweet and I'm sure and in this tutorial I want to show you why I always do dual frequency separation or double frequency separation on my images in Photoshop. So I want to show you the advantages of doing dual frequency separation. Let me show you what each of the frequency separation does. By this I mean I'm going to be doing frequency separation twice on the same image in order to retouch it and get better results out of it using frequency separation. So in some cases when you're doing frequency separation, sometimes your image may really not look good with the very first frequency separation action or frequency separation method you apply to it. So this is the image uh, with the first frequency separation and this is the image after applying the second frequency separation. You can see how fine and how beautiful and how crisp clear it is right here. So I'm just going to be demonstrating all that in this very tutorial and stick around so that you can see and understand how I apply it because if I told you have an action it may not be able to work if I told you apply it twice on the same image when you're retouching it so I'm just going to come and I'm going to delete all these other layers so that we can learn everything from I'm just going to delete these layers right here and I'm also going to delete this and the eye whitening layer. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to first of all come and play my action because I don't want this to be a very long tutorial like my usual tutorial. So I'm just going to come to my action and I'm going to play my 16-bit frequency separation action because this is a 16-bit frequency separation or 16-bit image. So I'm just going to come and, and play my 16-bit FS action. And for this case, I'm going to be using a radius of 7 because you have to take this down and you take it up up to when you start to close out all the details in the image. So I feel like 7 is a good point to retouch this image. And I'm going to hit OK. So when this finishes playing, you can notice that it usually creates for me a black and white layer within my frequency separation action. So I'm just going to close this and I'm going to come and delete the black and white frequency separation layer. But if I told you you need to use it as the whole player, you can use it or you can leave it and use it in your retouching process. So usually I come and I select the low frequency layer and I get my mixer brush tool. So I come under the brushes and I get the mixer brush tool right here. So I make sure it is a clean brush. The hardness rather is at 0%, meaning it is a soft brush and I make sure it is a clean brush. So I select this second option which says clean the brush after each and every stroke. The what I'm going to be using is 9%, the load of 75, the mix at 90, and the flow 100%. Then I make sure sample areas is not checked because I only want to work with the information in the low frequency layer, which is the colors and the skin tones. And with that done, I make sure the caps lock key is not turned on because when you leave it on, it means that your mixer brush tool is going to be this cross icon. So make sure you click or press the caps lock key to deactivate that cross like icon so usually i zoom in slightly i don't over zoom in because when you do over zoom in you may not see the unevenness within the skin tone transition so i make sure i leave it at a distance that is reasonable enough then i come and i turn off the high frequency layer or the texture layer then i start blending i know that to increase or decrease on the size of the mixer brush tool i use the open and close brackets on the keyboard so i'm just going to start painting colors or harmonizing the colors within the skin tones of this very image so you can see when you turn off the textures it gets a little bit less distracting so i'm just going to do this and i'm going to work on this very image just like that so i'm just going to be painting uh colors that are looking alike or similar and i'm going to be forwarding this because I don't want this to be a pretty long tutorial like my usual tutorial so just going to be forwarding this in a few but I'm mixing I'm mixing colors that are looking alike and where they are transitioning from one color to another I'm simply mixing that area too so I'm basically blending and evening out the colors within those specific areas using the mixer brush tool and I'm using Photoshop 2020 for those that always ask me the kind of software I use. So I want to show you how this is a very effective technique. And I discovered it a few 
months later on and i've been using it since then because it produces very nice and beautiful results from uh, the retouched images so just going to reduce on the size and they work on a way smaller area so let me just forward this so that you don't get bored with this very whole process so let me forward this and i'll be back when we are done uh, doing everything So welcome back and I'm done using the very first step for using the mixer brush tool or I'm done using or doing my very first frequency separation on this very image. So it is time to apply the second frequency separation technique on this image. So what I usually do, you can see I close this frequency separation group. So this is the before and the after so far. So I feel like I missed out on some areas as I was doing the very first frequency separation. So it is the reason that's why I apply the second frequency separation. So what I tend to do, I come and I create a stamp visible layer by hitting Shift Alternate Command E on the keyboard or Shift Alternate Control E on the keyboard. So this layer I create acts as the background layer. So if at all you don't want to get confused, you can name this to background just like that. So that you don't get confused background to. So we create these two other layers that are involved in frequency separation. So I'm just going to create those two layers by hitting Ctrl Command J. So you can rename this if at all you want. So it is more of applying frequency separation two times. So right now we're doing it manually. So after doing that, I'm just going to come and turn this off. I select the low frequency layer and I simply come to filter, blight, come back to Gaussian blur right here. So what I tend to do, I usually Dial this back a little so if at all i used around six or seven i usually take this back down by one stop and i use radius of around five so that i don't apply the same values on the image so i'm just going to come and hit ok and i come to the high frequency line now activate it and i come to image and i come down to apply image so right now i have a 16-bit image right here so what I'm going to be using, I'm, I'm just going to come and I select the low frequency layer. And now I'm going to select the blending mode as add. Opacity at 100%, the scale is to offset at 0. I make sure preserve transpires and mask cannot check and I invert this. So if I only have an 8-bit image, you can use a blend mode of subtract. And now you select the low frequency layer because we are, this, we are subtracting it from the low frequency layer. And now the scale is 2 offset 128 and make sure invert is not on and you can see we have the same result. So I'm just going to be using this for a 16-bit image. Leave my invert on and I'm going to hit OK. And I change the blend mode to linear light right here. So I'm just going to be applying frequency separation yet again. So I turn off the high frequency layer and I'm going to select the low frequency layer. With my mixer brush tool selected, I'm just going to retouch this image yet again to refine it and Right now, you can see every area you didn't work on in the very first process for the retouching of the image. So you just come and you simply fine tune or brush through those areas just like that. Let's come here and apply that and reduce on the size and you come <coughs> and apply it right in these areas. And you can see it is very, it is just fine tuning the image to look better and nicer. And you can now work on every area you have, you may have missed out rather in the very first technique or step for frequency separation. And you can see, you're going to see the results later on. So let me just brush through and... You can see I've not yet even cleaned up the blemishes from the image. So when we turn this back on, I'm just going to group these two layers and I'm going to show you the before and after. Let me also group this. So let me show you this is the image with just one frequency separation. And this is when we add our second frequency separation. You can see 
how better it looks with applying the second frequency separation technique or step to it and you can see this is the overall before and after so basically you can use the duo retouching or dual frequency separation technique to have better results out of your images using photoshop and if at all you have loved this video don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you not subscribe this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i see you in yet more retouching and amazing tools and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating